Ah uh, yes, Mr. Eugene Krabs, the legend. Everyone loves SpongeBob's employer, the Krusty Krab owner, and overall cheap crustacean. We all know Mr. Krabs would do anything for a dollar, even if it means landing himself in some legal trouble. Hi everyone, I'm Justin with Channel Frederator, and I ask you to briefly set aside your love for Mr. Krabs for just a couple minutes as we need to impartial jury because today we're talking about seven crimes that would put Mr. Krabs in jail in the real world. <laughs> Number 1. Breaking in For Mr. Krabs, the break-in occurs in the episode Midlife Crustacean when Mr. Krabs, SpongeBob, and Patrick break into an unsuspecting woman's house during a wild night out. Unfortunately for Mr. Krabs, this just so happens to be the household of his mother, Mama Krabs. Breaking and entering is a fairly minor offense compared to some of the other things Mr. Krabs has done. Since he doesn't steal anything, this would just be considered a misdemeanor, so Mr. Krabs would likely be looking at less than a year in jail. That's also also assuming Mama Krabs called the police on her son. What a, what a great mom. However, Mr. Krabs also gets the embarrassment of being grounded by his mother at the end of the episode and has to live with the uncomfortable truth that he was going to steal his mother's underwear. Honestly, I'm not sure which one is worse. I, I'd probably just rather do the jail time. Number two, petty theft. In Life of Crime, we learn that Mr. Krabs has some sticky fingers, or I guess in this case, sticky claws. Big, meaty, Claws. SpongeBob reveals that Mr. Krabs has stolen a barrel from Salty Sea Farms, a towel from the Sizzling Spring Sauna, a bikini bell phone, Sandy's hedge clippers, Plankton's lawnmower, and Mrs. Puff's hair curlers. I, I, I wonder what he's gonna do with the hair curlers. Like, what? The laws on theft have a ton of variables. It also often seems to tie to the value of the items, and I'll be honest, I have no idea how much a miniature lawnmower or a barrel from Salty Sea Farms is worth, and the punishment also varies from state to state, but realistically, Mr. Krabs would probably face a misdemeanor, less than a year in jail, and or a small fine. Number three, animal cruelty. All right, we've gotta be honest here. This is probably Mr. Krabs' worst offense, not necessarily legally speaking, but absolutely as far as morals are concerned, yeah. In Jellyfish Hunter, Mr. Krabs tricks SpongeBob into catching all of the jellyfish in jellyfish fields for him in order to make jellyfish patties for the customers. Unknown to SpongeBob, Mr. Krabs runs a secret factory. In one of the episode's final scenes, we see just how sinister Mr. Krabs' jelly factory is. The jelly extraction robots in the factory use all sorts of cruel methods to get jelly from the jellyfish, including drying out jellyfish via milking the stingers, which what? <laughs> that one still gets me. And also using a rolling pin to push out the jelly and using citrus squeezers and then force tickling the jellyfish to make them sneeze out jelly. It's unlikely that there's an existing punishment fit for animal cruelty on a scale like this and he would probably get life in prison. At the bare minimum, if we look at California's laws on this, Mr. Krabs would be charged with either a misdemeanor or a felony and face up to $20,000 and or imprisonment for up to a year. Number four, grave robbery. In one Krabs trash, Mr. Krabs sells a soda drinking hat that proves to be worth more than he originally thought. After selling that hat to SpongeBob for a measly $10, Mr. Krabs soon discovers that the hat is incredibly valuable and rather than stealing the hat from SpongeBob, Mr. Krabs attempts to convince SpongeBob to return the hat. And with all of this stuff going on prior, I don't understand why he just doesn't steal it from SpongeBob and he clearly has no problem stealing, but honestly, that's beside the point. <laughs> Unfortunately, our boy SpongeBob listens to Mr. Krabs and returns the hat to the grave of the now deceased original owner, Smitty Werben Jaegerman Jensen. Still a good name. Eventually, Mr. Krabs arrives at the cemetery and robs Smitty's grave. Anyone who steals from a cemetery may be charged with a variety of crimes. It all depends on what is stolen and the value of the stolen items. At the end of the episode, it's revealed that there are a ton of those soda drinking hats, so the hat itself wasn't particularly valuable or rare. Then again, Smitty Werb and Jaegerman Jensen was number one. He's a legend, he's the dude, so there is an inherent value associated with anything he owns. Depending on the value of the stolen items, the penalties for these offenses range from a class B felony with up to 20 years imprisonment and a fine of up to $15,000 to a class C misdemeanor with three months imprisonment and a fine of up to $500. When Mr. Krabs goes to rob the grave of Smitty, the hat is valued at $1 million, so more likely than not, he would have been facing the class B felony. Number five. Counterfeiting. Everyone knows that counterfeiting is illegal. If you need money, the worst thing you can do is attempt to make fake money. You're just going to need to pay big fines with real money, and overall, 
it's just a bad idea. In the Krabs Chronicle, Mr. Krabs starts up a newspaper to drum up business to the Krusty Krab, and we're not even going to touch the potential legal issues there. After Mr. Krabs' stint of running a newspaper company fails, he uses the newspaper printer to replicate the company's last dollar. Sure, theoretically, Mr. Krabs could print off a ton of counterfeit bills, but he doesn't consider the fact that dollar bills and newspaper are made of very different material. So even if he manages to print a million fake bills, the chances of him actually being able to to use them are about as thin as the newspaper they're printed on. Not to mention that all the anti-counterfeiting countermeasures that Mr. Krabs' money certainly would fail at, possession of counterfeit bills is a crime in itself, but if Mr. Krabs actually tried to use the bills at any point, then his punishment would have to escalate. So what would have happened to Mr. Krabs if he had been caught? Well, long story short, it wouldn't look good. Again, we're not really sure how crime works in McKitty Bottom, but basing it off US laws and regulations, Mr. Krabs would face up to fines of $250,000 and a prison sentence of up to 20 years. So, you know, it really doesn't seem worth the risk. Number six, animal theft. If you went to the zoo on free day, you'd probably enjoy a free meal, maybe get a free souvenir, or just enjoy a free day out in the park. But in Mr. Krabs' case, you would steal the unhashed egg of the zoo's most beloved animal. The theft occurs in the episode Survival of the Idiots. During the annual free day at the Bikini Bottom Zoo, Mr. Krabs helps himself to anything he can get his big meaty claws on. When Mr. Mr. Krabs sees a giant pearl in one of the zoo exhibits, he takes it for himself. This results in the clam crying inconsolably and a full-scale investigation of Spongebob and Patrick, who also happen to be near the scene of the crime. As if stealing the pearl wasn't bad enough, Mr. Krabs' actions get Spongebob and Patrick involved with the police. The punishment regarding stolen animals depends on the value of the animal. At first, the baby clam is just a pearl. Bikini Bottom is based on the Bikini Atoll, making the pearl a South Sea Pearl. South Sea Pearls are the rarest and most valuable of all pearls. A necklace of South Sea Pearls can sell from $10,000 to $30,000, and in this case, the pearl from the Bikini Bottom Zoo is worth at least $500. So Mr. Krabs would be looking at a maximum of 10 years in prison with fines up to $3,000. Luckily for Mr. Krabs, the Bikini Bottom judiciary system is a little more lenient, so the only punishment he has to serve is getting pelted with peanuts. Number seven, labor laws. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. We had to save it for last because Mr. Krabs violates so many labor laws that everything else would pale in comparison. Normally, we'd throw in a little exposition, talk about the episode, give some background to contextualize the crime, but in this case, I'm just gonna have to go ahead and rattle off the crimes because otherwise, this would become a 45 minute video. So, here we go. I'll list the crimes and the corresponding punishment. In Bummer Vacation, SpongeBob comments that a nickel is more than he makes in a year. In the US, minimum wage varies from state to state, but the federal minimum wage is $7.25 an hour. A violation of minimum wage most often results in back pay, so please give us a second as we crunch the numbers. Assuming SpongeBob works a 40 hour week, 52 weeks in a year, carry the two, we're looking at a minimum of $15,000. And Spongebob certainly works overtime, but we're not even gonna go there yet. In fear of a Krabby Patty, Mr. Krabs realizes that the chum bucket is open for 23 hours, so he opens the Krusty Krab for 24 hours. He then works Spongebob and Squidward for 43 days straight, and we're going to assume that Spongebob and Squidward aren't probably paid overtime here, which is also a crime. Failure to meet overtime pay results in a criminal prosecution and fines up to $10,000 for a first offense in addition to back pay, which would be time and a half. A second offense would likely result in imprisonment since we know that SpongeBob isn't paid minimum wage, he certainly probably doesn't get paid overtime. In the two faces of Squidward, when Squidward's face changed back to normal, Mr. Krabs slams the door in Squidward's face to make him handsome again in hopes of attracting more customers. Based on California guidelines, this would most likely be a battery and Mr. Krabs would face up to six months in jail and a fine of up to $2,000 if it's a misdemeanor or up to three years in county jail or state prison and a fine of up to 10 grand. Along with either charge, he would have to pay whatever workers' compensation is necessary for Squidward's medical bills. And failure to pay workers' comp would result in imprisonment in a county jail 
or a penalty of up to $10,000. So there you have it. I'm Justin with Channel Frederator, and thanks for watching 7 Crimes That Would Put Mr. Krabs in Jail. According to our criminal calculator, patent pending, for all of these crimes, Mr. Krabs would be looking at fines close to $400,000 and jail time near 60 years. And that's only for the crimes we kept track of here. Did you find anything else? Let us know in the comment section down below, and don't forget to click that little bell icon to become part of our awesome notification squad. If you liked the video, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you always know when we have something new. And as always, remember, Frederator loves you.